We continue to follow breaking news headlines this Sunday morning there on your screen. Now at 912 on the East Coast, you're getting a live look out in Gaza. And my goodness, this puts it into perfect perspective. As we're following breaking news, you see the missile strikes there on your screen. We're learning Israeli forces are battling Palestinian militants across the Gaza Strip this morning, including in parts of the devastated north that the military said it had cleared months ago. Now, this is where Hamas has exploited a security vacuum to regroup. Joining us live this morning to share the latest on this ongoing conflict and these breaking news headlines is national security expert, Mr. Ken Gray. Mr. Ken, always a pleasure speaking with you here on Live Now from Fox Good Morning. Good morning, Janae. Glad to be with you again. Glad to have you. That video truly compelling. I mean, seeing in real time these airstrikes and just further showing that the fighting continues now moving to northern Gaza. If you could catch us up, please. Sure. As you pointed out, uh, there is fighting erupting all across the Gaza Strip. Places that had supposedly been cleared of Hamas is now heating up once again. Fighting in both Gaza City and down in Khan Yunus. So while the IDF is uh, mounted up, ready to make uh, entry into Rafah, they find that uh, places that they had supposedly cleared are now heating up once again. The problem is, is that when you play whack-a-mole instead of holding a, an area and, and maintaining that, keeping the, the, the terrorists from returning to that area, you're going to have these eruptions. Uh, that. Uh, that occurs when you don't have enough manpower to actually clear an area and hold the area. Instead, the IDF has just simply cleared an area and then moved on to other areas, allowing the uh, Hamas to return back to those areas and becoming a problem once again. Mr. Ken, when you said whack-a-mole, it took me back to my younger days when I would be out at Chuck E. Cheese playing that game. But when you think of whack-a-mole, you know, it pops up and it goes back down. And that is how the situation is when you think about the tunnels and the network system. So Hamas pops up in one area, they go back through the tunnels, they pop up in another. But some confused why this is happening amid these uh, ceasefire negotiations out in Egypt. We know that Hamas did present that plan saying they're okay to stop fighting. But when they keep a Erupting through these tunnel systems that kind of goes against that notion. Yeah, so Hamas wins this uh, uh, battle with Israel as long as they survive. Hamas wins by not losing. And so things like the negotiations over the hostages, that is just another tactical ploy by Hamas to continue surviving, trying to get the world opinion on their side to stop them from entering Rafah of uh, works towards their favor of surviving. And so Hamas has played this very well. Uh, that's what their plan was from the very beginning when they uh, attacked on October 7th, grabbed hostages and brought them back into uh, the Gaza Strip. The whole purpose was to use those hostages as bargaining chips and trying to get the world to come in on their side. They were hoping for the other Arab nations to join them in fighting against Israel. That has not happened so far, but nonetheless, they are getting the world's attention. The world uh, viewpoint seems to be turning towards favoring the Palestinians in this conflict. The world looks at Israel's actions uh, against the Palestinian as uh, exactly what Hamas wants to have make it viewed as. That is uh, a big power beating up on a defenseless power. Hamas is the only thing standing between Israel and uh, wiping out the Palestinians. Mr. Ken, you mentioned the bargaining chips, and many feel, even the viewers, I've seen them mention, they feel like the Israel-Hamas war is being used as a bargaining chip when it comes to the election season. We've seen it on the Israeli side and also here in the U.S. And um, I will say, you know, we've seen recent news where President Biden has pledged to uh, potentially uh, stop supplying arms to Israel if they continue to invade. But if you think about it, the IDF has said from the very beginning, Mr. Can. We will not stop until Hamas is defeated. So the likelihood that those invasions will stop is honestly slim to none. Yeah, uh, it's interesting that this war has now become a domestic battle, both in Israel and in the United States. And Israel is a domestic battle in that the, those favoring hostage deals uh, being the priority are find themselves opposing the, uh, the interests 
of IDF and uh, those on the extreme right uh, inside Netanyahu's party that wants to wipe out Hamas and t remove it as a, a, a threat against Israel in the future. And so that's a, a domestic battle going on there. If uh, Netanyahu does not uh, continue the, uh, the process of pursuing Hamas, those on the extreme right in his party will walk and his government will fold. Those who are on the uh, uh, interests of the, uh, the hostages as being the priority, they, uh, they also can very well uh, cause this government to fold. And so it's really very much a domestic problem there in Israel as they are battling this, uh, this threat of Hamas, which attacked them on October 7th. Here in the United States, it's a domestic battle also in that uh, President Biden is, has his eye towards the November election. And he sees his backing of Israel potentially calving off a part of the De uh, Democratic Party, especially in the young. There's a, a, a number of people, a number of Democrats who favor the Palestinians over the Israelis. And so to try to uh, regain their votes, regain their interests, uh, President Biden is trying to play hardball with Israel, saying, do not enter Rafah, that Rafah, uh, that the, the, uh, the humanitarian crises that will occur there with uh, the Palestinians being within the, 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 the pathway of uh, Israel wiping out Hamas, that the death toll will be too high and that it is a price that the world will not uh, sanction. And so uh, this is very much a domestic issue here. President Trump, on the other hand, is pointing out that uh, President Biden, that uh, the policies uh, is actually walking away from our, uh, our ally there in the Middle East, Israel. And so he is, of, of course, against President Biden's uh, holding back arms to Israel. I want to ask you, with your expertise on national security, when it comes to aiding Israel and supplying arms, we look back to that aid package that was passed for Ukraine, Israel, and Taiwan. What message does that send to these organizations that are terrorist organizations such as Hamas and even Hezbollah? Because as you know, they could see us supplying those arms as aiding in the fight. And then we do have those military bases out there that, that puts a target on their back. So in that aid package, there was money for Ukraine, there was money for Israel, there was money for Taiwan. The money for Israel is, uh, was for buying uh, artillery, buying bombs, buying weapons for Israel, uh, as well as uh, resupply for their Iron Dome. Um, that money has been uh, uh, used to buy these weapons, but those weapons are not showing up in Israel. The, uh, President Biden has held back those those weapons right now because of a disagreement on the plans to go into uh, uh, Rafa. Um, <clears throat> and so that does send a message that you can affect the policies of the United States as long as you're loud enough and find uh, opposition parties within the United States that will do this. Now, the Republicans uh, have uh, looked at this issue and has talked about bringing articles of impeachment against President Biden over the fact that they had passed this bill that uh, the and the money was allocated for Israel and that this money is now being held back because of uh, the uh, the politics going on here and so uh, this this may become an issue both for Israel for uh, Netanyahu but it might also become just as big an issue for President Biden here. Absolutely. Well, Mr. Ken, we truly appreciate your expertise and perspective as we're keeping a close eye on this developing situation. It seems like every day something new is popping up amid people holding on to their family members being released by Hamas. This hostage situation still looming. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Anything we need to be keeping a close eye on before I let you go? Yeah, I'd like to bring up the point that uh, the uh, Israel uh, has been focused in on trying to wipe out Hamas. Uh, the Hamas has moved uh, further south and further south. They are supposedly in Rafa. Uh, IDF is focused in on trying to uh, separate the Palestinians from IDF there in Rafa so as to be able to, to engage Rafa, uh, the, the Hamas within that area. But here's the big question that I have. 
Is Hamas still there? That is, they've had plenty of time to uh, exfiltrate out of Rafa to, uh, and they're popping up elsewhere within the Gaza Strip. So has the fact that IDF has not carried out this plan of entering into Rafa now for several weeks, has Hamas managed to get out of there? And then this would be an operation that will, have not, will not have the outcome that they're hoping for. I'm glad you mentioned that. Something to keep on our radar. Mr. Kennegan, thank you so much for joining us this Sunday morning. You enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.